Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. I am Miss Nur Fadila from Chemistry Unit. So in this lecture, I will teach you chapter 2 atomic structure. So before we start, I am pleased to remind you to always have a lecture note together with you so that you can write down any extra note that I write on the slide. Okay, so let's start. to lecture 1 of chapter 2 atomic structure in this chapter there are three subtopics subtopic 2.1 Bose atomic model subtopic 2.2 quantum mechanics and subtopic 2.3 electronic configuration so let's start with the first subtopic Bose atomic model so here are the learning outcomes that you should be able to study at the end of this subtopic so a describe Bose atomic model B. Explain the existence of energy levels in an atom. C. Calculate the energy of an electron using the formula En equals to negative Rh times 1 over n square. D. Describe the formation of line spectrum of hydrogen atom. And E. Illustrate the formation of Lyman, Balmer, Passion, Bracket, and P. Fine series. So before we go further into Bose atomic model, let's start our lecture with the introduction of light. Light allows us to make use of our eyes and to see the world around us. So light that can be seen with our bare eyes is a visible light which is one of the electromagnetic radiation. It has a wave properties, thus it is characterized by wavelength, lambda and frequency mu. So as uh, shown in this diagram that you have studied during your secondary school. So this equation shows that the relationship between the frequency and the wavelength. So wavelength lambda is inversely proportional to the frequency. Since electromagnetic radiation carries energy through space, it is also known as radiant energy. So this diagram shows the electromagnetic spectrum. So electromagnetic spectrum is a full range of electromagnetic radiation, a range based on wavelength value. So the light that can be seen with our eyes fall within the visible region. So visible region has a range of wavelength from 400 until 750 nanometers. So as you can see that the higher the value of wavelength, from 400 to 750 nanometer, the value of frequencies is getting smaller. So if we focus on the visible region, so there are seven wavelength range in the, within the visible region that correspond to seven different colors. For example, the red region color has a wavelength of 656 nanometer. The green color region has a wavelength of 486 nanometer and so on. So why do light has different colors? Different color correspond to different wavelength. So do you notice that some of the light is produced from hot material? Take a firework as an example. So what do you think cause the brilliant colored lights of fireworks? So the lights are actually a burst of energy given off by atoms in the firework. What do you suppose causes this burst of light? So the answer has to do with electrons and energy levels of atom that is proposed by Niels Bohr in his atomic postulate. So let's start with the postulate number one. So postulate number one, Niels Bohr states that electrons move in circular orbit around the nucleus. So when moving in the orbit, the electron does not radiate or release and do not also absorb any energy. So as you can see in the diagram, so Niels Bohr study the behavior of the electron in hydrogen atom since it is a simplest atom that only consists of one electron. So, according to Niels Bohr, electrons move in circular orbit just like our planet orbits our sun in the Milky Way. And when the electron moves around the nucleus, it does not radiate or release and also it does not absorb any energy. Postulate number two. Niels Bohr states that the energy of an electron in hydrogen atom is quantized. 
meaning that an electron moving in an orbit can have only a certain amount of energy. Now, a certain amount of energy is actually referring to the word quantize here. To further understand, the electron, the energy of electron at orbit n equals to 1 is not the same when the electron is in orbit n2. Okay, same goes when the electron is located in orbit number 3. It has a different energy compared to when the electron is in orbit n2. So how do we calculate the energy of electron in its specific level or its specific orbit? So by using this equation, where in this equation, the RH value is a constant value known as right bird constant. It has a value of 2.18 times 10 to the power of 18 joule. Th sorry, times 10 to the power of negative 18 joule. So where N are referring to energy level, also known as orbit or shell, and it is also known as principal quantum number. So N must be an integer starting from the first orbit 1, 2, 3 until N equals to infinity. And you should know that energy is 0 if the electron is located infinitely far from the nucleus. And if you also notice that in the equation, there is a negative value that relate with the equation. So energy associated with the force of attraction are taken to be negative, this negative sign. So negative sign here is actually indicates that the electron is attracted to the nucleus inside the atom. So by using that equation, we can now calculate the specific energy of electron at specific orbit. So n equals to 1, the electron has energy of negative 2.18, times 10 to the power of negative 18 joule. Okay, so when the electron is in orbit number 2, it has a different value of energy. Same goes when the electron is in orbit n equals to 3. And same goes when the electron is located at orbit number 4. So since the energy of electron at orbit has different value, it is said to be quantized. This is an energy level diagram. So energy level diagram illustrate the potential energy of orbit representing what uh, by the y axis and this horizontal line represent the orbit starting with the lowest orbit or the lowest energy level which is n equals to 1 up until n equals to 2 n equals to 3 n equals to n equals to 4 up until n equals to infinity and as we have learned before each orbit has different uh, value of energy because the energy of electron at, at specific orbit is quantized so the main point that i want to emphasize on this energy level diagram is that if you notice the energy the energy gap between each orbit is getting closer as the number of orbit increases. So why is this happening? This is because the difference of energy of electron or the, or the difference of energy between the energy level becomes smaller as the distance of electron and the nucleus increases. For example, the energy difference between the orbit N2 with energy at orbit N1 is bigger compared to energy difference between the orbit N3 with orbit N2. So since the energy difference is smaller, then the energy gap between each orbit is getting closer. So we will continue with postulate number 3 and number 4 within the next video.